to create relationships face to face, like take people out to dinner, take people out to lunch, get face to face with people off of the back of you producing content, right? We're in a sales business. You've got to do selling and you've got to meet people or have agents that meet people. One of the two, right? Um, five tips. It's a lot. I think those two were really good. <laughs> and, and I can almost like say, I was just expecting you to say just like a one sentence thing for each one, one. but you did, a, you did about an hour on, on two pillar content. Uh, and then, and then you're, you're a sales agent. Don't, don't fucking forget it. Today we are with Byron Lazine, and as opposed to me giving your introduction, can you tell us who you are, what you do, where you're from, yeah, and uh, your favorite hawk sound? My favorite <laughs> hawk sound. I can't wait till this gets rebranded the Hawk's Nest, so I can say I was the first one in the nest. You are the first one in the nest. That that's a true statement. That is good. Uh, yeah, Byron Lazine. Uh, can I always go Connecticut shoreline because people don't know the small towns in Connecticut, these small little shoreline towns. So. Connecticut Shoreline real estate team. Uh, we've got, I don't know, 14, 13 agents. We've been recruiting a little bit heavier the last couple months or so, and we're going into 2020 on heavy recruiting mode. So uh, we have a, a marketing division that does work for ourselves and uh, some other companies, and and uh, that's really it. Real estate guy. What would you say is your biggest source of income as far as uh, lead generation service or revenue source? What, what are you guys focused on the most yeah, part? Yeah, sales. So, um, resales, new development, that's our is biggest there, source of is income there a for sure. Specific niche as far as expireds for sell by owners, uh, uh, any, anything. Our new agents are, are, their niche is absolutely in the new agent program working expireds and, and, uh, you know, traditional, uh, FISBOs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but really over 50% of our leads are sphere, believe it or not. And, and sphere for us because we do so much branding and content uh, in our in our market, that word of mouth and those referrals are really coming from the content that we're putting out there. Hey, you know, so and so watched your YouTube video, said I should connect with you. So over fifty percent of our closed deals we're labeling as sphere, but there's so many or referrals, right? But there's so many breakout categories that go into that. It's not like, you know, we're doing the the Brian Buffini, you know referral methods it's yeah. all through the content that we're putting out and i think that that's very interesting because a lot of people will come into our academy or they'll listen or see some of the things that some people are doing on social and just marketing in general um, and you have a lot of people from the outside what's the return on the investment from that social yeah. media post what's the roi from social media and what you're saying is hey we're getting a lot of people from our sphere and this sphere is kind of a, a, a broader term because they were referred by somebody who watched the YouTube video or somebody who came through this channel. I mean, the, the, <laughs> at the end of the day, people are still trying to help their friends and family, right? So if we're at coffee and I bring up the fact that I'm thinking about buying or selling a home and then I'm sitting across from you, right? Like that other person that sees our branding in their Facebook feed every single day wants to add instant value to their friend or their family member hey, you should talk to Byron, right? Because they're seeing our content each and every day, whether they're, and this is where people are really having a hard time in our industry, is they're getting caught up in how many hearts they're getting or comments or all this like shit that just actually doesn't matter as opposed to like focusing on how many referrals are you getting? How many agent referrals are you actually getting? track that number. And if it's going up over time, your content's working, your awareness methods are actually having an effect. So what would you say to the naysayers that are, you know, well, social media, this and marketing this, what's your ROI on this? If you can't track your videos to specific pieces of, you know, transactions, if you can't track a specific post to, you know, another transaction, why should I be jumping into this social media bandwagon? Yeah. I mean, I would say then just basically become a Zillow employee, which there's nothing <laughs> wrong with that, by the way. You know, our, I mean, 2018, less than 2% 2, 2 of our closed business was Zillow. And this year it'll, it'll be probably upwards of 10% because Zillow launched Flex in our market. So we weren't buying a lot of leads at all, obviously with less than 2% of our Zillow business. 
Now with the flex, where we're paying them on the back end, we don't mind it because it's an opportunity for our agents to get a deal, get a past client, get somebody built into their sphere, all of that. But if you're just going to want to be able to track to your point, right? Like this came from this Zillow lead and I'm paying out this, then you're going to work on a much lower margin because companies like Zillow are figuring out how to generate leads better than any agent out there. And any brokerage for that matter can generate leads right now. And you'll become just, you know, I know Zillow is not going to be hiring agents as employees anytime soon, but the quotation Zillow employee. So for somebody that's still standing on the sidelines, thinking about, you know, how to advance in social media, how to do more things, just, I mean, just do a post, your advice to them would be what exactly? My advice would just post something every single day. Like, even if it sucks, right? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I've just never gotten caught up in any of the the stuff people are getting caught up in, in, in what, I mean, I guess it would be like, uh, you know, what makes them feel good, right? Like the, the judgment out there of, of social media. I'm not getting caught up in that because... I'm only on, I only joined Facebook and Instagram and these things for my business, right? Like I wasn't on there doing anything else. And then when I got into my real estate, I'm like, okay, I need an advantage over people that have been doing this 30, 35 years that have, you know, those instant referrals coming in from their kids. And now this one's buying, my cousin's buying and you're getting the referral. You need to break through and have awareness. The first uh, subdivision I ever got was two sisters watching a YouTube video. Uh, video of mine they had their brother's a developer their family father was a developer they had the same agent for 25 years okay they had a 76 lot home subdivision he had sold 67 of the 76 homes he wasn't selling out the last nine quick enough the sister said to their brother you've got to talk to this guy we keep seeing him on youtube we're watching his videos he brings me in for a meeting I do a one or two hour pitch and within a week I sign the rest of the subdivision away from their agent of 25 years who their father originally hired. Okay, sold out those nine and that was able to, you know, basically propel our team into more new development opportunities. A couple of years ago, we signed a 60 plus million dollar new development sellout, which is right outside of Yale. It's, it's the in, in my opinion, certainly there's really not that much new development in Connecticut. It's the best new development east of New Haven on the Connecticut shoreline, hands down. We signed a three-year exclusive on that because we started to crack into the new development based off of a YouTube video, by the way, that the sisters never shared, never commented, never liked or whatever it is on YouTube, the thumbs up or whatever, right? Never did any of that stuff. They shared it with their brother, who was a decision maker on real business, and then he called us in for the pitch. So outside of some of the, what a lot of agents would call basic things, are there any advanced things that you might be doing? And when I say advanced, that might be running an ad or boosting any post or maybe doing anything that's a little bit different than just doing a post. I mean, yeah, we're running ads on Facebook. I don't think that's really anything different than a lot of that's agents. very advanced for some people. Well, sure. <laughs> I guess what I want for most people actually, um, you know, I think I'm pretty, unadvanced actually i don't think i'm doing a lot of things right uh the only thing i've i've done right in this social media content world is i've been fairly consistent with it as much as i can and more consistent certainly than my local competitors uh, you know I'm, I'm also at an advantage in connecticut where i don't have supreme competition so it's easier for me to stay consistent. and why don't you have supreme competition there's just less deals so there's less agents okay. i mean there's a lot of agents you know in, in context to how many deals there are like everywhere else, but you know, out here, California, you have more competition. It's better competition. People are paying more attention. People are doing more coaching. People are doing more training, all of that. We, we kind of, we have over 60, uh, over 60 year old age average in our market. So it's not that that is, you know, makes you outdated or, or whatever, but, uh, it's, it's been a relationship business. It's new England, it's small towns. So uh, I think one of the things that you said is p pretty interesting about the people that are just standing on the sidelines is that, you know, you're, you're considering an, an ad, not really advanced, but also one of the things that you said is you don't consider yourself, you know, this huge expert or doing all these crazy things. I try to tell people all the time is your goal is not to break the algorithm. Your goal is not to, you know, 
change the way Facebook works all of a sudden and become the best thing in real estate. Like yeah. you're focusing way too much time trying to do, uh, not even trying to do advanced things. You're just wasting too much time time trying to become the Facebook expert or the Instagram expert while other people are just doing posts, just doing boosted posts, just doing getting people to watch some videos um, while you're still trying all these advanced quote unquote things to become this expert. What would you say to those people that are just wasting a lot of time trying to learn every single thing and do every single thing? Yeah, it's that it's that perfection mentality of like, I don't want to even put out this listing video until I have the video team re-edit it six, seven times, right? Before I put it out, not putting it out is what's holding you back, right? Waiting an extra three days is maybe the reason you lost the buyer or the relationship or whatever. You know, if you're a team like recruiting, putting out content about your current team and how happy they are and the environment and the culture is going to get you more DMs on Instagram that says, Hey, I love what you're doing. And now you're following up on a warm lead, right? Like, Hey, I love what you're doing. Oh, I love what you're doing too. Let's go have coffee. Instead of you coming in cold saying the classic, let's grab a cup of coffee so I can recruit you line. Now, when you ask for coffee, it's going to happen because they just reached out to you with the, I love what you're putting out there. I mean, I think our last four or five recruits have all come in on my Instagram DM, basically love what you guys are doing. You know, you're putting out great content and starts the conversation. And, and, and it's kind of funny because I've had somebody sit in that exact same spot who is in our academy who said, Jonathan, there's just a lot of things that are basic in there. And I go, yeah, but have you done any of them? Like, have you optimized your profile? Have you filled out the correct things on your profile? A lot of those people, a lot of people in general, not just in real estate, but a lot of people in general just want to jump to doing all these fancy tricks, gain a billion followers overnight yeah. and do all these crazy things when a lot of the basic things work and generate business and revenue that you need to make sure that you're doing those things prior to doing all these crazy things. Would you, would you disagree or agree? No, I, I agree <laughs> with that. And, and if, if the goal, you got to remember what your goal is too, right? Like if your goal is to do, you know, 50 million or a hundred million in sales, how do I meet more people? Right? Like the four D's of execution, that book, it's like, uh, I need to generate listing appointments so I can get listings so I can get listings sold, right? Like you have to uh, create these types of relationships and you're not going to do it taking eight coffee meetings in a day, one-on-one, -on -one, right? You're going to want to have four or five one-on-one -on -one face to face meetings and listing pitches and buyer presentations and whatever they are. Uh, but you're going to want to talk to a lot of people in your community at scale. And you're not going to do that sitting on the sidelines, not putting out content, uh, whether it's, you know, featuring the community, interviewing the uh, superintendent of the school district, whatever it is, not just getting it out and overthinking it. Like, you know, what you showed me with the account or with, you know, with, with what you have is you can follow a checklist. So, you, you know, somebody had mentioned to you, you said just now that, oh, it's pretty basic. Well, what's not basic because what's not happening is people actually following through on the execution and working down the checklist and saying, yeah, I've done this. I've done this. I'm doing this. I'm setting this up. And, and that's what you've beautifully set up for some people. Um, one of the things that we recently released was called the 15-minute uh, social media audit. And uh, again, a lot of people come to me for ads or they say that they're posting a lot of content, but they don't get any business from it. So what we did is we put this guide together. Uh, have you had a chance to look at it? Don't, don't worry, we're, <laughs> we're not calling you out. Am I getting quizzed? Uh, but essentially what it does Eric, is- send, it, send me the cheat. Cheat notes. It goes over four four different categories: uh, social influencing, listening, selling, and what's the fourth one? Uh, awareness. Uh, basically, it goes through four different types of categories for you to audit the types of posts that you're doing, and then put those into a specific category. For instance, a lot of people say we're doing posts, but we don't get any business, and I go through their last 10 posts through this audit. And I said, all of your posts go into the social uh, awareness category, meaning that's the type of posts that you did. Uh, social selling posts is asking for information, is driving them to do something. So I think that it's very important as you talk about your personal aspects, the brand aspects, community aspects, business, real estate aspects is the types of posts matter. If you only talk about personal type posts 
in a social influencing type category don't expect to get business. Mm -hmm. If you only talk about real estate from a, here are the facts about the, the park opening. Well, that's great, but how are we tying these things in? So I'd recommend, and I'd recommend for you guys also, if you haven't looked at it, to, to give me your input on it, because I think that it's very interesting as I go through people's previous posts and they say, this is not happening. So well, you're not asking for it to happen. Yeah. You're not, you're not telling them to do these things. I, I think where you're going on this is something that I've unlocked in my own mindset in the last couple months, which is literally, if you go back over the last seven years of my content, you see nothing but whether it's real estate news based or like with our team, obviously community based and, and, and stuff for the team and listings and all that kind of stuff. But I've never really put out any personal uh, what's happening in my life type of content, right? In, in terms of like I've shared my story and that kind of stuff. But my daughter's two and a half years old. I didn't even know you had a daughter. Right. I just posted it for the first time in two and a half years, a picture of us on Facebook on my personal page literally like a month ago first time ever in two and a half years and that was the reaction a bunch of people were like I didn't even know you had a daughter right and that one post I actually ended up setting four coffee meetings it was like I don't know over 100 something comments or whatever it was right just hey beautiful picture blah 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 but people that I'm like oh man I haven't been on my radar in a year and a half then you you know start chatting with them outside of the post and boom for meetings that were valuable meetings for relationships and, and various reasons, right? And what that is going to do over time, if I continue to share some personal stuff, is it's going to make me look less of an alien and, be, and impact our ability to recruit great people that, that are going to work with us. What are some of the things that you're doing in your videos that are helping the engagement or helping it the video itself gets seen by more people or is there anything that you're, that you're doing? It's not a trick question. Yeah. Um, j just trying to be thoughtful about the copy. Right. And, and mm. for us, like if we're doing real estate news, like on the real word, if we put Zillow in there, then the engagement goes way up, you know, so paying attention to what people have engaged in the past and then, and then doing more of it. So tell people that are listening to our podcast, tell us a little bit more about uh, your podcast and, and kind of the goals and intent of that. Yeah. The real word, uh, Nicole white, who's, uh, on my team, we, her and I do podcasts together and we just cover three topics that are happening in the real estate world. So we call them the rackets. Like, is this a racket or not? Basically that's our way of saying, is this bullshit or not? And, um, and so it could be something trending about compass, I like to talk about the compass agents lately or Zillow or, um, or whatever, right? Whatever's happening in our industry. And we're going to put our two cents on top of it. We, the reason we're doing that podcast, and this is a good hack for anybody that whether it's going to be, you can think about this community, however you want to think about this. If you're like, I just don't have the time to do a podcast. Well, that's total bullshit. We're taking three trending, whatever's trending a lot of times even on Inman, right? Three uh, headlines that are already trending, we're going to do our due diligence on it, and then we're just going to give our opinion on those headlines. We don't have to come up with the headline. They're already <laughs> trending, okay? So we're going to take those three headlines, comment on them, give our opinions, and just record it every single Tuesday. And so that goes out by the, by the end of the day, Tuesday, right? So we're sitting down for half hour, getting it done and moving on with the rest of our day. So you don't have to sit here and plan all day, all week about doing one podcast or one show. Are you using anything for social to get trending topics as well? Like a buzz sumo or any of the platforms Not out there? Buzz sumo. No, we're kind of just like Google trending, Twitter trending, uh, Inman trending, just seeing what's trending. Yeah, so week. I think that the number one trending platform is buzz sumo okay. to tell you what's buzzing on the internet. Another cool little tip or advice is Quora. Have you used Quora no. before? So Quora is the number one uh, question and answer forum on the internet. And what you can do is you can go in there and you can type in your city name and just see all the different types of questions that are being asked about it. What's cool about it and the, 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 the way that we use it is, you know, I'll go in there and I'll type in digital marketing and you'll see all these questions on digital marketing. Well, not only can I go in there and answer the question for them, 
but I can give them a resource like my podcast to watch or uh, a blog that was written, or maybe we might do a specific piece of content based off of this trending question. What's very cool about it is after you answer about five questions in a specific topic, Quora will actually start emailing you when those questions on those topics start trending mm. uh, and you can go in there and answer them. So it's a great way and an easy way to throw in a YouTube link to get more views on your YouTube video or again, yeah. a blog or a podcast or whatever it might be. I'd look and into that. And you're seeing some, some real estate specific topics on there. There's tons, tons? of them. Oh, tons. I've got to get on this. I mean, I, I type in anybody that we've done, we've typed in a city name and there's hundreds of questions. Wow. And it's crazy because they use Google questions as well and kind of plug them in and then allow the forums to start answering them. And they pull in from, I don't know how many sources, but it's just on one platform, super easy to use. You can answer the question. It's like old school chat rooms. It is. Yeah. And it's little, It's crazy how many questions every single day questions in that's, specific that's areas tip. so it's it's something like uh what's the neighborhood thing that some people like using oh yeah it's uh it's got a green next door or next something? door next door yeah. so it's similar to that except it's not specific to real estate or specific to a community it's just opened up um oh, that's it, great and they and they notify you hey there's somebody talking about social media blah 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 do you want to answer it yeah i'll answer it that's awesome um what, so what, <laughs> I don't know. We kind of got off topic yeah, there. I like those tips. I'm, um, I'm like, I want to grab my phone and write them down, but I'm going to wait until after. You can just go back and then watch the podcast. Watch so the that podcast. way I can get an extra view. Timestamp that one for directly me. from you. Um, so one of the things that you guys are doing with your podcast, as far as any syndication or distribution kind of tips or tricks that you yeah, would give to somebody else that has a podcast. Yeah. The one uh, distribution channel that we have that's been effective for the real world is Inman puts it up every every week so that that's been uh helpful for awareness because that that one's all real estate agents right so we're, we're just providing information to agents people that are interested in the agent community and what's happening uh but i would urge everybody like if you're doing local content think about your chamber who is sending out an email list or an email every single week to a whole bunch of people in your community and they're not providing great content most of the time so can you get your show on there can you help maybe uh, you know, help them set up their email. Maybe they're not even doing it effectively, right? And so there's a lot of ways in your own community that you can get your content out there. And how how long have you had your podcast? The real word we've been doing two years. It's, I had a podcast before that that was, I don't know, almost 200 episodes in. And uh, that one, is, you can't even find that one anymore. That Why not? YouTube That's a lot of so content. It's a lot of content. Uh my business partner and I ended our partnership. Got it. And then uh, he actually deleted the YouTube channel on me. So, oh. Yeah. So that's why you can't find it. So I kind of restarted from over. Got over it. A couple of years ago. So would you would you recommend saving your content into a I would recommend. Drive or I would recommend or if you're in any kind of partnership, uh, if you have a YouTube channel, setting it up under your own Gmail or, you know, if you think your partnership is not is not going to be forever. <laughs> no. If you go into a partnership thinking you're going to leave the partner, yes. then uh, make sure you have a way to get out of it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, but the thing, here's the thing. I didn't get crippled by the fact that I had a couple thousand subscribers on that YouTube channel and I had over 300 videos. Um, all I knew was the consistency is what got me there. So I just kept being consistent. And in fact, this podcast, The Real Word, is performing much better than the other one, right? We've been on Inman Innovator List, Bomb, Bomb, uh, their video influencer top 10 last year. And so, again, I'm, I'm not getting crippled by losing content or I'm not getting crippled by how many people are subscribing or any of that stuff. I'm only focusing on the impact and the relationships that I get out of it. This, this podcast is called Real Advice because we truly want the guests to provide advice to people on a broad range of topics. And we've kind of bounced back and forth on a few things, but let's say when it comes to social media, digital marketing, podcasting is kind of this big realm. What would be five things that you would recommend to somebody um, to start doing or look into or maybe a mistake that you made early on, what are five things that you would tell an agent, hey, do this, don't do this, 
uh, I'd recommend listening to this. What are, what are some things that come to mind? And in the realm of producing content in, in the realm of, yeah, it's just, just, just advice five, that you, five tips. If somebody were to not watch the entire podcast and just yep. watch these five things to just kind of get, you know, I, I don't really like using the word value, but to get value out of it, what would, what would those five things be? The, the number one thing I would say is produce a weekly, whether you use the Gary V, v word of pillar content. Did you say Gary V? Gary V, I think it is. is <laughs> Gary, it Gary V? v? <laughs> Gary V word of pillar content, right? So like have a one show, a one podcast, a radio show. Like I have a radio show, for, for example, that's all local content and we redistribute it as a podcast the following Monday. But have one thing, and actually I think radio, for example, is something I would look into. I know this sounds crazy. For people that, the podcast thing seems too heady and all this social media stuff seems way too heady. Go to your local radio station, get a show, have somebody sponsor it. So you don't have to pay for it. Like have, you know, the local uh, builder sponsor it or whoever. And then just ask them for the, you know, they've got all the equipment there, ask them for the recorded copy. And then now you have a podcast. Okay. Figure out the RSS feed and all that kind of stuff. And then redistribute as a podcast. Now, once a week you're doing a one hour show and you have a podcast out of that. You can go Facebook Live while you're recording. You can do live. I do live uh, calls, right, with the community. And so we, we give away some gift cards. So we're building an email list within our community just based off of the callers. Hey, you didn't get it, but stay on the line. Chris is going to get your information. And, and then we get email, phone number, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, you can break that up into 30-second clips on Instagram or Facebook. Out of that one-hour radio show, you should be able to get all the content for the whole entire week. So tip number one, get a major piece uh, show pillar content for the week every single week and just do it. So if it's the radio show, you're forced to show up if it's a, if it's a live radio show. Um, the other thing for agents is don't forget that like you're in sales. You're in a sales position, right? So all this uh, content and everything is really the opportunity to create relationships face-to-face, -face. like take people out to dinner, take people out to lunch, get face-to-face -face with people off of the back of you producing content, right? We're in a sales business. You've got to do selling and you've got to meet people or have agents that meet people, one of the two, right? Um, five tips. It's a lot. I think those two are really good. <laughs> and and I can almost like say- I was just expecting you to say just like a one sentence thing for each one, one. but you did, a, you did about an hour on, on two. Pillar content, uh, and, the, and then you're, you're a sales agent. Don't, don't fucking forget it. So pillar content, sales agent, we'll say radio show. Yeah, I'm a big believer in the radio because, listen, here's the other thing about the radio. I'm going to harp on this Okay, one. so maybe we're just going to say we're three, gonna, four, and five is radio. It's radio. <laughs> here's why. You know, if you're- uh, wherever you're selling, certainly in Connecticut, it works for me. The average age of the people that I want to talk to are not millennials. They're just not. I want the high price point. I want the person selling the expensive home and then downsizing into the more expensive home, right? I want the baby boomers, 50 years old and up, 45 years old and up, personally. Now, if you want in whatever your community is, the average price point, there's nothing wrong with it. You're going to be like super units focused and you're going to go average or, or below average of your community price point. Then yeah, focus on, on the millennials. Uh, absolutely. Right. But radio, if you get on a talk, sh like talk radio station, just stay away from the politics, right? Don't, don't get into that part of it, but where people are listening, listening to political conversation throughout the week and they're used to talk shows and then you sneak in your real estate radio show on Saturdays from 11 to noon before all the open houses start and all that kind of stuff, right? You're speaking to the audience that you want to get listings from. And if you're not out there to get listings, just get out of the business now. You need to control the inventory in your marketplace and you need to speak to the people that own the homes, 50, 55, 60, 65. The millennials are going to come and buy those homes once you have the listings anyway. So you'll take care of the millennial relationships over time, but I'm focused on the baby boomers who are not ready to give up their cash just yet, who are going to keep spending over the next 20 years. They're going to grip on to this 
for a long time, a lot longer than we think. I think you need to put together a how to produce a radio show and how to distribute that yeah. radio show. There's so many advantages to it. And it's cheap right now. What what what, what does cheap look like? Free for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's that, pretty cheap. That's pretty cheap. But uh, I'm certain that if you go in there and negotiate and, and bring some sponsorships to the table and, and just some community influence that you can get a show per week for a couple hundred dollars. Would you also recommend like radio ads or you're just specifically talking about a show? So I've been doing the radio show for three years now and I just started running ads the last month and a half because they're ridiculously cheap too. And I've created a good relationship at the station for like three years. And I've been running some ads now. Uh, you know, I would advise you to set up a, a different dot com so you can kind of track that ad a little bit. But uh, I would I would go with the show first. I'm always a big believer in the content because you can get so many uh, pieces throughout the week f from that. 2020 is going to be here before we know it. What What's the one thing that you're focusing on next year? Uh, as kind of like your your big thing that you guys are trying to hone in on? From the real estate team perspective, we're honing in on on recruiting now. We've built it backwards. We were, you know, we've got five uh, administ people in the administrative position, various positions. We have the real or the uh, marketing company, which has five employees over there. And so the last six months, our focus is let's get great agents that uh, that want to build a personal brand. Right. We're, we're not the team that is, you know, it's not the Byron Lazine team. It's called one in company. So you can have one individual agent that's got a fantastic personal brand. It's got this whole company behind them. I'm, I'm a much more, I'm much more into the Vince McMahon model of let's build out Hulkamania. Let's build out the rock and not be afraid that the rock leaves and goes and starts his own thing and becomes bigger than the WWE. Uh, because I want all of the new agents. We have a new agent program. We built that out last year. Um, that's every Monday through Thursday. We want everybody that's in our community that's getting into real estate to want to come through our program if they're a fit, right? So so in 2020, our biggest thing is uh, to really triple our agent size. Nice. If nobody listened to the first 35-ish minutes of this entire podcast, they jump to this very end. This is the last thing that you're going to say. What would be that last piece of advice that you would give to somebody? It's going to be super cliche and like people are going to probably even roll their eyes if they haven't already with me. But uh, the big piece of advice I'm going to give you is to figure out how you're going to invest in yourself before you're going to do any of this other stuff, right? Be selfish before you can be selfless. Mm. So my thing is my morning routine and, you know, 5 a.m. call and that whole kind of thing. I'm not saying you've got to wake up early. I'm not saying that you've got to be part of a, like a 5 a.m. call community and have accountability around your morning routine. But one thing I know for sure is if you're not taking time and the beginning of the day is the best time to do it, to invest in yourself, gym, meditation, swimming, whatever the hell it is, you're not going to have the clear day when you come in and try to impact. If you want to have serious impact and impact people on your team, be a great leader and impact clients and sellers and buyers and get people to believe in your vision. If you're not coming in with a crystal clear mindset every single day, it's not going to happen for you. You're not going to have the energy, the ambitions to do it. You're not going to have the strength to do it. And it just will not happen. So invest in yourself, be selfish for you and then go out and spend the rest of your day being selfless. If people want to follow you online, find out more information about what you do, where can they find you, social media? Yeah, Byron Lazine. I, I, have my, I have my handle on everything. And then TikTok, which nobody has my damn handle, won't let me have my handle. If you're working for TikTok... Not enough characters this, or somebody already has it or... No, nobody has it because I'm searching it. And I think it's because maybe I set up a Musical.ly back in there. I don't know why. I can't get it. So I think we set up... We set up about 5,000 accounts with different names, maybe years ago. I, no, no, I was in that upload. <laughs> no, but yeah, just at Byron Lazine. Certainly, if, if you want to get my attention, I, I read every Instagram DM, like Facebook Messenger, you might get lost, but Instagram DM if you want to chat. And website that they can go to? Byron Lazine. Sweet. Com. 
Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.